Okay, here they come. Okay, so straight away you can see one instant use for the arpeggiator. Uh, normally when you're working um, on a piece of electronic music and you want a little row of notes going did 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 what you normally... <coughs> turn off the acoustic feedback uh, speaker icon here and then you will not hear that note when you click on it. Yeah? Let me delete that note. Normally you take your pencil tool, for example, you'd set your quantize to sixteenths, as this arpeggiator has and you'd set your length quantized to something shorter, like 30 seconds, like this arpeggiator has, and then you'd say, okay, I'm gonna draw in a row of little 16th notes, one by one, and it takes, it's, it's a fairly laborious task. And then play back, and you get this. You get the same thing. Or you could have drawn in four and copied them over again and again, but I mean, in, in essence, that's fairly long-winded compared to using the arpeggiator. Or if you're a little bit more further down the learning curve, you can use the paintbrush tool from this icon here. Click the little triangle and you get these choices, yeah. Choose the paint tool, and again, with the settings of 16th for the quantize and 30 seconds for the length, if I hold down the left mouse and drag this across opposite one of these pitches here on the keyboard, it will draw in a row of 16th notes and there'll be a 30 second in length, like this. Oops, oh God, my coffee cup was in the way there, because anyone who's a regular to these uh, things knows that they're all done with coffee. Um, yeah, there's our row of 16th notes, and again, we get the same thing. But you know, how much easier is it to use the arpeggiator and just grab your pencil tool, set the length to a whole bar, one one, yeah, and just drop in a C3 note that lasts the whole bar and let the arpeggiator chop it up into sixteenths of a thirty second in length. And then when you want to move that around, all you've got to do is just grab it and move it up a, a tone like that and it just moves everything. It's like having a row of sixteenth notes and just by grabbing this one note you're moving the whole lot up and down. You haven't got to lasso and, and circle all those little bits and drag them up and down and what have you like that. So that's one thing that the arpeggiator can do straight away with a single note. If you take the semitone range down all the way, whether it's in up or down mode, it'll just do that repeating sixteenth, if it's set to sixteenths here. Yeah? And if I increase the length to eighths, each blip will be an eighth in length, and it'll last longer, and you'll, the, the notes will slur together more. Or I can reduce the the quantize down to eighths, make them shorter like little 30 seconds and get a, if I set the quantize grid to eighths you can see where the steps will come every eighth, yeah, and we get, whoops, and we get this effect. Yeah, so there's one useful thing the arpeggiator can do with single notes. Um, what happens if I employ this semi range here. What if I bump that up to an octave which is 12 semitones? Yeah, one octave. In up mode with everything set the same eighths for the quantize and each step that it lets through will be a 30 second in length. With one octave range available it does this now. Eight steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It plays the root first then the octave above, then the root, then the octave above, yeah, then the root, then the octave above, this step, then the root, then the octave above, and cycles back to play the root again. Okay, so you get that. Okay, what happens if I put it in down mode? Will it go boom, 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 and drop down an octave? No, it doesn't. Because the arpeggiator is working upwardly. When you're using it in this mode, without employing this order on button, which we'll come to later, in up mode, it always works up the octaves Okay, that you've set in your semi-range here. So if I added in a second octave, so I've got 24 here, and also, by the way, I can click on that and just type in 24 and then enter. Or I can, on any of these three, I can grab the little blue thing yeah, and just slide, oops, and then a, a fader appears. It's a bit fiddly, and I can do it like that. And these two settings have an up-down stepping little pair of arrows that you can use as well. Okay, so now we've got two octaves range with the same quantize and length, 
we get what's what's going to happen with one octave range it went boom 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 now we've got two octave range let's hear what happens okay now that's a sort of um that pattern isn't resolving to the bar if you notice the reason for that is when you're in this mode without this order on button switched on okay you add up the amount of, of octaves of range you've got here, which in this case is two twelves is 24, which is two octaves, and you add that to the original root note, or root octave. That gives you a total of three. So it's going to play the root first always. So it'll play root, then first octave, second octave, then back to the root, first octave, second octave, then back to the root, first octave, oh, it can't play another one because it's on the last step and it cycles back to the beginning and plays the root again. And um, so you get that. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, like that. Um, it sounds okay if you increase the tempo, that's a useful little arpeggiation. Um, like this. Yeah, but um, if you want the arpeggiation on, on eighths to resolve to the bar so that each side of the bar is resolving to the full amount of steps of the pattern, we need to add in another octave. So we've got three octaves range, that makes 36, three twelves of 36. And then it'll play root, first octave, second octave, third octave. Then it'll go to the next half of the bar and play root again, first octave, second octave, third octave, and then we'll get a perfectly resolving pattern. But it'll have four steps in total, the root, first, second and third octave, then root, first, second and third, like this. What happens if I put it in down mode? You get this. See, it's playing, it always plays the root first, but then it plays the following available octave range back to front. So it's playing root, third, second, first octave, root, third, second, first. If I reduce this down to two octaves, 24, and I'll just drop my tempo to say 100. <coughs> okay, it'll, it'll now, we've got two octaves range plus the root makes three, so it'll go root, second octave, first octave, root, second octave, first octave, root, second octave, and cycle back, and we'll have that uneven three, three, two pattern again, but in reverse, okay? But it will always play the root first. One. One, two. Yeah. Let me slow it down even more to say 50, and then we can hear it a bit better in context, okay? This is what's happening. It's going root two, one, root two, one, root two, root two, one, root two, one, root, two, root, yeah? Just like in up mode, only back to front. Root, one, two, root, one, two, root, one, root, one, two, root, one, two, yeah? So you kind of see how this is working now? In up or down mode, if you've got more than one octave range available for it to come back down from, it will always play the root first, and then it will play the available octaves above the root, that's in this case two, or in the case of 36, three. It'll play them either in an upward fashion or a downward fashion. <laughs> 